Here's what we're working on in the newsroom. Republican candidate for Governor Rob Asserino says New York's SAFE Act has done nothing to make people safer. An alleged drunk driver swerving to avoid hitting children and a police officer in the street over the weekend was arrested. And work begins in earnest now on the state budget. In sports, Syracuse earns a three seed and a big weekend for local sports, including two state titles for local high school basketball teams. Yeah, big, big, uh, big weekend in high school action. And it is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we will talk a little, uh, little education. We'll talk the NCAA tournament. Uh, Brandon Lang, the inspiration for that movie, uh, Two for the Money, mm-hmm. uh, played by Matthew McConaughey, is uh, coming up in just a few minutes. All of it uh, next hour. First news, Keeler in the morning, Monday morning on WYBX. Researchers are looking for volunteers to participate in a study of how artificial light affects birds. The study is being done by researchers at Cornell's Lab of Ornithology, Syracuse University, and Globe at Night, which is an international science campaign that measures nighttime light pollution. If you want to participate, go to our website at wybx.950.com for all of the details. Republican candidate for Governor Rob Astorino says New York's gun control law has done nothing to make people safer. Rob Astorino says the law was just a headline grabber for Governor Cuomo. He says it demonizes law-abiding citizens. The Westchester County Executive says the real issue is mental health. He says they have taken steps to address that at the county level. He is vowing to repeal the law if elected. A sex offender is facing new charges after he allegedly gave sleep medication to a five-year-old. Police say Jason George is facing charges of endangering the welfare of a child, along with reckless endangerment. He's also facing the additional offense of being an offender and failing to report an address change. He is being held without bail. A 38-year-old man from the town of Rome is dead following a snowmobile crash over the weekend. Police say Michael Rim was riding on a trail when a snowmobile apparently struck a snowbank. He was launched into the air, hitting a fence and some trees. He was pronounced dead a short time later at the hospital. And the New York State Legislature's Budget Conference Committee is getting to work today. Budget subcommittees will be gathering this afternoon to review budget bills and reconcile differences between the Senate and Assembly versions of the bill. Lawmakers have until April 1st to approve the state budget. The legislature has approved budgets on time in each of the first three years of the governor's administration. In sports, it's the beginning of a new era for the Knicks under owner James Dolan. While it hasn't been officially announced by the team, it is widely known that the organization organization will be introducing Phil Jackson, a first for him, in a role that will be running the front office tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. The Yankees swept their split squad games yesterday. New York beat the Braves 7-4 and the Marlins 7-0. It was a good day for the new Yankees starting rotation. Masahiro Tanaka tossed four and one-third innings of one-run ball with six strikeouts, while CC Sabathia pitched five shutout innings with five strikeouts. They play the Pirates this afternoon. The Mets split their two split squad games yesterday. New York defeated the Cardinals 10 to 4 while losing to the Cubs 6 to 3. The Mets take the field against the Marlins this afternoon. Syracuse picked up a 3 seed in the South Region of the NCAA Tournament. The Orange will take on the 14th seeded Western Michigan Broncos Thursday in Buffalo at 2:45 on CBS. Big weekend for local sports. Comet split with Abbotsford and two state titles for local high school basketball teams. Sports brought to you by Sigalert. Trapped in traffic again. You could have avoided it with Sigalert. Before you go, visit SIGalert.com. On the go, download the Sigalert app available on your iPhone. So he was the uh, inspiration for the movie with uh, Matthew McConaughey. Who else was in that movie? Uh, McConaughey, Al Pacino in the movie. The movie was called Two for the Money. And we're going to uh, talk to Brandon Lang coming up. In two minutes, he will make his picks. So as you're maybe filling out your bracket. Um, I've got it right I'm, here. <laughs> I'm taking notes. Take notes. This guy knows his stuff. Back in two. It's 707. First News Keeler in the morning on WIBX. Uh, what's going on with us? Do we have him or, or do we not? Uh, we're working. He was supposed to call us. but uh, Okay. Uh, Brandon Lang, we're talking about that. If you're filling out your, your bracket, um, you never use your heart when filling out a bracket, right? And there are some chances to win some unbelievable, like, who's doing the billion-dollar? Uh, uh, that that Warren was Warren Buffett. Buffett. I Warren think we're, on our site, um, Town Square is doing a million-dollar bracket challenge. So if you get it, if you were to get a perfect bracket, you could win a million dollars. You know, the, uh, the lottery right now is up to what? It's another high one. 400 Meg, million. This is mega millions. goes to 400 million. The drawing is tomorrow night. It's getting to the point where I think it'd be worth it for me to play. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, well, you could, the old, there's uh, nothing to lose, you know. You know Your take you, home is uh, two hundred million or so, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, even if you think about it, even if you won a million dollars, wouldn't you be okay with that? I think you would. So if you walk away with five hundred thousand, they'd probably take about half of it, right? Mm-hmm. 
I love the people that say, uh, I, I, only, I only play when it gets, gets large. Um, a- actually, if you think about odds, uh, what you should be playing is that, uh, that raffle for the Save the Day Foundation they do at the Comets game. That thing gets up to like ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 every game. Crazy. Mm-hmm. And the odds there are what? One in a couple thousand? Maybe a little more than this that. This is embarrassing. When you walk in, though, where do you, is, are they, they set up on the side? Where do you They're sign set up to up play that? Somewhere, and you can do it. When you walk in, I think you go to the left. If you were coming in the, uh, the steet entrance, which is what it's called now. Oh, okay. But, but additionally, they'll come right around to your, uh, you'll see them walking all around in the corridor, and, and they'll come right to your, 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 your the seat. seat. Yeah. And you, uh, and you pay, and, uh, who knows? You win. It's all electronic, too. Uh, they put it in, and the, and the, uh, the tickets come right out of the, uh, I think they do. Maybe I dreamed that. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, here is, uh, did you see the story about the guy in Chicago who chained himself to the door of a highway rest stop? I mean, imagine, uh, I don't know if you recall what the rest stops used to be like on the New York State Thruway, but they were really pretty rough, and there weren't any uh, real chains. Now it's all, of course, filled with, uh, it's like going into some sort of a, an airport uh, a restaurant or even a mall mm-hmm. uh, restaurant wing. Um, food court, I guess, is what you'd be looking for. But this guy, uh, he was conceived at this Chicago area rest stop. So in protest, as they were going to demolish it and build a new one, this goof uh, decided to chain himself to the rest stop on Friday to stop it from being torn down. Uh, He was conceived there after a Phil Collins concert almost 22 years ago. Um, And if his parents could go back... And do it again. Just think, um, you know, why would you, uh, it's, you know, things do change. Things that used to be sometimes go away. Really? Don't you sometimes wish you had the time to do these wackadoo things that some of these people do? I do not wish I had the time to do that, just so you know. (laughs) Just had the time, not saying that you would do it. Use it for that purpose. Uh, We're working on Brandon Lang. We'll get to him coming up in a second. The uh, the other story that we're uh, working on here uh, this hour is the New York State Senate put out uh, their proposed budget, it came out on, on uh, Friday, and it caused a bit of a firestorm. Everybody doing some talking, including SSFC, Statewide School Finance Consortium. Uh, these guys uh, work with school districts, and it's all about the funding of school districts, which has been an issue. And while the Assembly seemed to come forward and help out schools like Utica, some of the bigger schools, the Senate budget, really you have to wonder what they're doing. It puts money into pre-K uh, put a lot of downstate, a lot of downstate appeasement going on here, and money into into uh, into charter schools downstate. Uh, uh, Senator Joe Griffo, I spoke with him on Friday. Um, we'll get to that, but first uh, is uh, Dr. Rick Timms uh, of SSFC. What is uh, what what are we learning out of this out of this budget for local schools? This budget well, proposal out right now is is that the uh, senators voted in favor of a measure that provides. Well, pre-K and after-school program for New York City, tax rebates to the wealthiest New York State communities, uh, significant financial commission uh, uh, financial commitments to charter schools, you know, rather than support the public school system, not only in the Mohawk Valley but across the state. And 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 you know, it's well known. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of talk about this. Well known that this uh, the, the schools are in a really rough position right now. Well, I guess that's why we can't understand it. We've been suffering under these state aid cuts called the gap elimination adjustments for the last four years. And it looks like the Senate is going to send us into the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th year at this rate. So I, I spoke with, a, with Senator Griffo on Friday, and he said, you know, it is, it's very difficult. He said part of the problem is the, uh, the Senate does not have a true majority anymore. They have a voting majority, which means deals have been cut with some... Uh, some some Democrats, downstate Democrats, and said that they really had no choice but to but to to vote for this. What what are your thoughts on that? There's always a choice, Bill. I just don't buy it. I think the thing is, is these. Uh, I think the Senate is in such a hurry to get their one house budget passed, get the budget passed on time, that really they're not thinking long term. Now, uh, it is true though. There is a coalition between uh, the Senate Republicans and five. Uh, senators, of which one is upstate, by the way, in the Syracuse area, and uh, those 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 Democrats push for more money for New York City, 
And in order to pass that budget, the Republicans went along went along with it. I'm not so sure the rest of the Democratic Party went along would go along with it. For instance, we had some Democrats uh, in Albany County, Dutchess and Putnam County, Zeri County, Westchester, Monroe uh, County, and uh, part of Greene County and Montgomery County vote against this proposal. So, uh, you know, to me, it's like, well, they'll have to sort out their politics. Uh, we've got to have some adults in the room because these school districts are floundering without this uh, without this aid, especially with these cuts continuing. Yeah. Even the uh, the assembly budget is not going to do much for, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll help, uh, it, it will help schools like Utica, but the other uh, rural school districts in the, around our region probably not going to help them. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we're glad to see Utica get some help, and if the Senate or the Assembly can do it, then great. But there's other school districts, too. I think you're going to find probably about a dozen or so school districts get the most help, and I, I know they're in dire straits, but so are, are a lot of other school districts. The problem is they're not spreading the money around. A lot of this is either concentrated uh, in a few school districts, or it's concentrated in New York City. But the key thing here is is that they won't release more funding to actually make this work better. Uh, so what do you see coming? Obviously, the, uh, the, the Senate and, uh, and Assembly will get together and come up with one, uh, one proposal, a lot of negotiating going on right now. What do you, what, what you think is going to come out of this? I mean, can anything be done? Oh, yes, there's still time. I think what we've got to do is people have got to call their senators, especially state senators in this region, and uh, they got to let their assemblymen know uh, that really they need state aid to flow to all schools, and that these cuts have to cut have to stop very quickly. We can't sustain another five years of this. You know, we want nanotech moving into our region. Who's going to move into our region if the schools are going under? Uh, they're going to just commute from Albany or Rochester or someplace. So the key thing here is is that uh, I think there's a lot at stake in this region. Who is uh, of the school districts? I mean, we know, we know that uh, certainly Utica is in uh, dire straits. Um, which school districts are, uh, which school districts in the area, in our general Mohawk Valley area, are in trouble versus hanging on versus doing pretty well? Well, I think we're all, I don't think any of them are doing very, very well. I think most of them are hanging on. Uh, I don't think there's any, like, in dire straits that are going to close their doors tomorrow, but usually that's reserved for the small cities such as a Utica or a Schenectady or something like that. Uh, Syracuse the city is also, I think they're about ready to lay off their, like, thousands person or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is what actually happens is, is we, let's not confuse, quote, the, uh, the idea of going broke compared to educational insolvency. What's actually happening here is the schools will keep the doors open for a couple more years. There's no doubt about it. But what you're going to see is kids will have less programs. They'll have less courses to take. There'll be less staff. Kids will get le- less help. I mean, in terms of our performance, it's, it's going to start going down the hill. We're going to have... Uh, less people, less resources to get these kids through. And even the kids who make it through will not have the transcripts that allow them to compete against their wealthier counterparts and wealthier school districts. And, and uh, you know, part of what seems to be working is when the governor says things like, uh, education is about uh, it's about the children, it's not about the teachers' unions, it's not about money. Um, well, that rhetoric seems to be uh, that seems to be working. People like to hear that. It seems. Well, I think it's a little misguided. I think people have to say, you know, it's not all about the money, and and it, you know why? Because most people have the money. We don't. Uh, it's about the money for us. It's about the distribution of the money. Certainly, there's a lot of money poured into education, but we're not getting it. Uh, I think that's the key thing. I mean, there's the other thirty seconds of the first thirty second soundbite that's missing, and I think people have to understand that we have been drastically shortchanged. Our kids are just as important as anyone else's kids. They've got wealthy school districts out there, of which there are none in the Mohawk Valley. Let, 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 let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you this: Did is was there an eye? I mean, every year it seems like you're fighting, you're 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 lobbying your your senators and your assemblymen uh, to to put something together that's going to help these schools. Um, is this a bit of uh, is this a bit of payback? Is 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 there some anger over the fact that the that the schools and the school unions and the parents everybody got together and just protested all year long about the Common Core? Well, you would hope, well. Here's a, there's a couple things there. One is is that you would hope there would be no backlash from representatives. They're supposed to represent us and listen to the voice of the people, They're not supposed to tell us what to do. It's the reverse. The second thing is, I think this whole Common Core debate has not helped. I think it's taken our eye and the eye of the of the Senate and the Assembly and the Governor off the financing of education. It's been a huge distraction. And I don't know if anyone has noticed, but there's not going to be many changes coming up in the Common Core. 
company has already had its commission out. We've got a number of commissions. We've got a number of laws coming up. But they're not going to make significant changes. Uh, the key thing is is that uh, we've got to compete on, a, on an international uh, scale. And that common core, one way or another, one version or another, one assessment or another, is still going to be there. And so what actually happens here is I think the common core debate is taking the oxygen out of the roof so that we don't realize what we're doing for the funding of school districts. Tons mm-hmm. of other mandates are still there. Yeah. And meanwhile, uh, while it looked like in the beginning there was a bit of a victory when uh, when they were going to delay the Common Core, um, when you really dig into that, not much uh, really changed. Absolutely not. Yep. But, you know, I think what legislators were trying to do is get people off their backs, and I understand that. But, the tr- but here's the other part. As of last, I'd say, Wednesday, we were hearing from senators that they were going to eliminate half of the state aid cuts, and that those cuts would be gone in two years. By Thursday morning at, or at 2 a.m. or Friday morning at 2 a.m. when they're voting on this, all of a sudden most of that money, if not almost all of it, is evaporated. Now, the part that, that you can actually see is there was some unbelievable deal-making, and you've got to start asking yourself, what's going on? We need our representatives to stand tall, and if it's not a good idea, they got to vote no. It may be unpleasant, but they got to vote no. I uh, got it, uh, uh, Dr. Rick Timms, SSFC State Finance uh state schools finance consortium uh, uh in syracuse thanks so much i appreciate the time you're welcome thank you not sure what's going to happen all of this uh, the budget will come into play by the end of the month so there's a few weeks to uh, get in there christine has an update on what's going on in the news good morning 723 good morning and this news update is brought to you by centralnewyork.com find up to date easy to navigate local real estate listings at centralnewyork.com that is centralnewyork.com global aviation security coming under intense scrutiny as officials still cannot find that missing malaysia airliner voters in crimea voting to split the region from ukraine and and join Russia and the Connecticut legislature considering a bill to let the terminally ill get lethal prescriptions from their doctors. That uh, that vote, uh, Crimea vote, was um, almost similar to like the North Korean vote. Ninety five percent of all of those people there voted in uh, in favor, while the military watched on. Mm-hmm. Interesting stuff. Uh, listen, forecast today: partly cloudy, some sunshine squeezing in, and a high of twenty six. We're at four above right now to start things off. At 724 on WIBX. All right, coming up in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about the uh, polling that was done. There's already been a poll that has been done on what would happen if Congressman Richard Hanna faces Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney in a primary vote on, uh, on, uh, in June, which the primary is in June. What would happen? Um, you know, there is uh, some talk out there that some people, uh, especially on the conservative side, very unhappy with Richard Hanna. If the vote were to have happened uh, right now, what, how close would that be? I'll give you details on that coming up after the news break, which is uh, happening in just a second here. Uh, pretty interesting numbers there. Uh, we'll get to that. New York Sash, uh, how about a brand new bathroom in just two days? Do you know if you do a bathroom project, Davey, if you decided to redo your bathroom, Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. You're going to have to take the tiles all out. You've got to take the walls down. You've got to move the tub. You've got to get it out of there. The toilet's got to come out. The vanity, the sink. You're going to move some, uh, some, uh, you know, some piping around. And then you've got the floor. Maybe you have a tile floor. You want to remove that. You get that out of there. The debris that's got to be taken away. You get a dumpster. You've got to get a dumpster. How are you going to get that out of there? You're going to carry it through the house, all through the house. Imagine you're doing this by yourself. Two months later, you're not even done yet. And what you did finish doesn't even look good, for God's sakes. Imagine if you could do this in two days. I gave you a chance to, to imagine. What do you think? Incredible. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's exactly. Uh, New York Sash can get you a brand new bathroom in two days. It's the acrylic bath liner and wall system. It fits exactly over your existing tub, brand new. Like maybe you have one of those peach-colored bathtubs. Those are fun. Ours is blue <laughs> and faded blue. And, you know, I'm like, listen, I can buy this paint in the store. We'll just paint it. They Supposedly you can paint tile and everything. Um, my wife just wants a new bathroom. And She's smart. It, it's the uh, it's the tile that's old and cracked and that sort of thing. Uh, this can all be dealt with over the course of a two day bathroom makeover, and it will end up being a brand new bathroom. New York Sash has some of the bath systems on display at their showroom on Ariscotti Boulevard in Whitesboro. They can convert your current bathtub into one that is a walk in shower or one of those tubs that has the door 
where uh, for, for people, maybe somebody that's elderly and there's an issue of uh, a handicap issue that needs to be dealt with, all of it can be done using your existing plumbing and everything else. Amazing. That's what I say. And so did Davey. Uh, New York Sash has the best systems on display on their, uh, in their showroom on Ariskany Boulevard in Whitesboro. And you can also use their Build Your Bath software. This is cool. At NewYorkSash.com, right from the comfort of your home. It's a software that allows you to play around with the designs and styles of the acrylic bath systems and see what it might very well look like right in your very own stinking home. And part of the problem with redoing any room in your house, like a bathroom or a kitchen, uh, is redoing a bathroom is going to take you... Uh, easily weeks several weeks to have this done in two days is nothing short of a miracle what they do to the bathroom oh, you're i wish add i to that i thought i really left right. it in a pretty good place well no i'm just saying this is i think i mean i don't know how you can make that any better you can't but you could i'm just saying you're what about they to do, try though i'm gonna i'm gonna okay. i'm gonna go out on a limb i'm gonna say what they do to the bathrooms i wish that i could do to myself you know? okay i'm glad you said that you know That's what i mean awesome. yeah that now, is, instead of working out or eating healthy i can just whoosh, Two Not days, a new body. bang, two days, brand new body. Andrew, I must confess, you did make that live commercial that much better. Thank you. That was really awesome. Uh, new York Sash, 624-7344 uh, is the phone number, NewYorkSash.com. 349 Ariskany Boulevard in Whitesboro. Uh, today is the official, today is St. Patrick's Day. If your birthday is on St. Patrick's Day, well, then your name is Edward O'Sullivan from New Hartford. Uh, technically, it's Ed Sullivan, but you know Edward. Uh, Ed Sullivan, happy birthday to Hartford. Davy Smith. Woo! Da, da, da. It's Davy O. Smith. Davy O. Smith. Uh, right in the other room. He's answering phones today as Manaski is on vacation. Davy, happy birthday. How old are you today, by the way? 39. 39 years old. You don't look a day over 39. Uh, is that how the saying goes? No. Uh, Patty Lemon from Whitesboro and Amanda Moyer in Vernon Center. Happy birthday. We'll give the cake to Edward O'Sullivan. Ha! That's my best Irish. Uh, Ed. Ed Sullivan in New Hartford gets a cake from the Italian Florentine Pastry Shop. They're waiting for Wednesday, which is, of course, St. Joe's Day. Uh, Florentine on Bleecker Street in Utica. Uh, get a birthday on the radio by going to our website at WIBX950.com. Hometown of the day today is Sequite. Uh, newsmaker High School Basketball, both Notre Dame and New York Mills. will be talking to the coach, and Emily Durr will talk to her from Notre Dame next hour. And my gripe of the day today is just simple cold. C-O-L-D. Take a break. Back with news in two minutes and W-I-B-X. W-I-B-X news time is 734. Your news brought to you by CentralNewYork.com. Find up-to-date, easy-to-navigate local real estate listings at CentralNewYork.com. CentralNewYork.com. The disappearance of a Malaysian jetliner revealing some major problems with global aviation security. Senator Charles Schumer noting that two of the plane's passengers were traveling with stolen passports and were able to board because the airline never checked their passports against Interpol's stolen passport database. The New York Democrat says he will introduce a bill today to close what he calls a massive loophole in security. Officials from Crimea scheduled to arrive in Moscow today to ask to become part of the Russian Federation officially. Crimean voters on Sunday overwhelmingly approved a Kremlin-backed referendum to split the region away from Ukraine. The European Union could impose sanctions on Russia as soon as today. The man who founded and led a notorious anti-gay Kansas church is reportedly near death. An estranged son's Facebook page says Fred Phelps of the Westboro Baptist Church is in hospice. The 84-year-old and his family members have picketed the funerals of soldiers, homosexuals, and others. An Army general facing prison time for sexual assault is now pleading guilty to lesser charges. According to the New York Times, Brigadier General Jeffrey Sinclair is expected to enter a plea to charges, including disobeying a commander's order and using demeaning language to refer to female Army officers. The Connecticut legislature will hear from the public today on a bill that would allow terminally ill people to get a doctor's help dying. The bill would allow a mentally competent person who has been diagnosed with six months or less to live to obtain a lethal prescription from a doctor. And health officials set to launch a study into whether dark chocolate really protects your heart. Scientists at 
Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital are expected to announce that they will test whether cocoa flavanols can cut down on heart attack, stroke, heart and heart disease deaths. Your weather brought to you by Utica on Tap at the Stanley on Saturday, March 22nd, presented by Pizza Boys in New York Mills. Get your tickets now. Advanced tickets are $30.40 at the door. You can find out more at UticaOnTap.com. Three degrees, WIBX News Time, 737. Actually, it's four degrees. We've gone up a degree. Oh, my Lord. It's that warm Heat out. Heat wave, yeah. That is awesome. Uh, listen, coming up, hold tight. Uh, if the election were to be held today, primary election between Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney and Congressman Richard Hanna for that congressional seat, how would uh, it turn out? According to a poll, uh, I have the results of that poll for you in two minutes after Fox Business News, which is next in WIBX. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the beautiful weather outside. Spring is going to be here, I believe. It's uh, when does the um, when does spring officially the calendar spring? When does that begin? This the twenty first. The twenty first. Uh, it's this week. We're at the seventeenth. So tomorrow's the eighteenth. Nineteenth is Wednesday. Twentieth, and then uh, overnight into what? What time do you know? So it'll be Friday. Spring is here on Friday. And uh, our, and it's our not gonna forecast, feel like it, by the way. partly cloudy, high 36 with a 10% chance of snow and, on and, and Friday. And by the way, I must say that um, the word is that uh, I'm gonna, it's going to be about five minutes before I, I get to him, if you could let him, him know. The word is that we may have colder weather coming for the weekend all over again. So I, I'm going to stop talking about it because I, I think I annoy people. I just got some uh, lawn furniture that we want to get out into the patio, and it's not going to happen. I have plants. We have a problem with plants, and I, I don't care. I'm not embarrassed by it. We, I had to put a, uh, we'd taken a door and gotten rid of a door. I have to keep the cat out of a certain area. We brought all these plants in, and here's the problem. When the plants are outside on your patio, apparently there are these stray cats, which I haven't gotten with my BB gun yet. Um, <laughs> He's kidding. I wouldn't do that. As people are typing away, I can hear the sounds right now. <laughs> and I'm not good with a baseball either. I mean, I just, uh, I, my accuracy is brutal. However, the phones what, are ringing. what happens is I will try to bring those plants in. And I think, I feel bad because I gave you some plants. But what has happened is it seems like some stray cats have gone into the plants. Now, whether they've gone to the bathroom in there or they've rubbed up against it or whatever, and then you bring those plants in your house, your current cat, like we have a cat, I shouldn't say we, it's my wife, has a cat. So the cat, which is a completely cat. clean cat, we don't have any issues, except when I bring these plants in, the cat wants to go to the bathroom and the plants, as if to, I'm told, by talking to some cat whisperer, that what the cat is doing <laughs> Is it's uh, it's uh, it's smelling the other animal and it is laying its uh, I laying don't know. its eggs. No, no, thank God. It's leaving its scent. So, are you telling yeah. me that you gave me plants that have cat pee in them? I don't know the answer to that, uh, Christine. I don't know the answer, but I, thought... I can tell you this: there's something. It's the third year this has happened that we have to keep the cat away from the plants. I put aluminum foil on these things because uh, to, to, apparently cats don't like that. I lined in our dining room, I lined the entire carpet. Now, the good news is the cat doesn't urinate, will not urinate, only the other. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not good either, but and it's only happened three times, but three times, so now we have to keep the cat out of that room. Keep her out of that room, everything's fine, so I've got to shut it off. But I've got to come up with something, like you've got to repot the plants or something before you bring them in or something. This is crazy. I lined the entire carpet in the dining room with aluminum foil it took me seven <laughs> rolls of reynolds wrap and i taped it all the whole thing and it, i did like a about a four foot basically like a four foot area so the cat couldn't get all the way in what did that cat do made its way all the way over there walked across that and then uh it doesn't scare those cats away so you gave me again i believe <laughs> there may be the possibility or probably what happened is the only ones that it happened in I kept those plants. Mm, I've been struggling so. to keep these alive all winter so that I could give them back to you. Each one has maybe two fronds on it. it, is, it that, <laughs> yeah, that does. They don't do well in the winter months. That's odd, though. Because those are palm trees that I gave mm -hmm. her. I think that's really weird yeah. because dogs will not go where other dogs have been, where it seems like cats, they want to. You know what I mean? Well, like they you always notice, it's, like it's their dog. area. A dog yeah. will do the same thing. It's the dog's area. The dog will do the exact same thing. They kind of go around and... But if, but if other cats had gone in this plant, in said plant, I don't know, then Andrew, the other... I don't know. I don't even like cats. I'm not a cat person. Me either. 
don't write me letters about it. I'm nice to the cat, all that stuff. The only thing we're doing is keeping her out of that area because otherwise she will do something. So until I get those plants out of the patio, this happens. It's terrible. Uh, okay, I told you uh, why I got into this story. I don't know, Davey. I'm sorry. Uh, but I am uh, uh, I just can't wait for spring. That's the thing. So we get these stinking plants out of the house. Literally and stinking Maybe plants. the cats will go. Uh, <laughs> cat will go with it. Okay, if a, an election were to be held today, the primary election would be held today between Representative Richard Hanna and Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney, because you know the story right now is that there are petitions that have been drawn up that um, and we're told are if they haven't hit the streets, they're hitting the streets this week, and maybe we'll know tomorrow uh, or this week whether or not uh, we're going to have to know this week whether she moves forward in a to primary the congressman. So uh, Syracuse dot com rece- received uh, the results of a poll that was done by a uh, a pretty reputable uh, reputable group, and according to that's McLaughlin and Associates that conducted. Uh, the poll for the Hannah campaign, and here are the results. You ready? If the election primary were to be held today, uh, Richard Hanna would get 73% of the vote. These are of likely Republican primary voters in the district, compared to 17 for Claudia Tenney um, and 9% that are undecided. Does that surprise you? That's a big margin. Mm-hmm. That's a huge margin. Uh, now, is it because, I mean, one of the things they, uh, they said is in terms of name recognition, many of the people, uh, many of them did not know who Claudia Tenney was. And, uh, you know, could that play uh, a role? Uh, very well could. And certainly this is before a campaign. You'd have to spend a lot of money, right? You'd have to do a lot of advertisements um, to get your name out there. But if it were to be held today, those are the numbers. Um, I wonder if that changes things one way or the other. Will Claudia Tenney go forward? Can she go? A lot of questions. Can she go forward and still continue to campaign for the assembly? So if she primaries here, now this primary, the federal primary is in June. Um, in all likelihood, would it be possible, and I believe that it would be, for her to primary in the congressional district and then turn around and campaign and and uh, in her primary and win her primary to uh, to regain the assembly seat, which we, she currently has. I think that's possible. We'll find out what comes of all of this. Hopefully we'll talk to both of them at some point this week. Uh, how is this weather uh, that we're dealing with right now? How is it affecting the uh, the economy, our local economy? You might be surprised. We've got a guy on who has some local ties. Uh, John Lawrence coming up in two minutes. I'll tight Christine with an update on what's going on in the news. In the newsroom here this morning for Monday, St. Patrick's Day. Good morning. It is 747. Utica Councilwoman Samantha Colosimo Testa is calling for the city to put a hold on borrowing. She will join us on the show later in the hour. Republican candidate for governor Rob Astorino says New York's SAFE Act has done nothing to make people safer. And a 38-year-old man from the town of Rome is dead following a weekend snowmobile crash. Uh, partly cloudy, then some sunshine. Uh, we see a little bit of those clear skies right now. High today going to a sweltering 26 with a low tonight of 7. Tomorrow, mostly sunny in a high near 40 degrees. We're at four above right now to start things off on WIBX. 750, what are you doing over there? You would be, I'm going to tell you something. When, when you're back behind the walls, Manaski is on vacation. He's sitting on the beach probably right now watching the, the sun, which has already come up. Do you think he's listening to us? I don't think I so. I think he's if in I, bed right if now. I would, right, he probably is. Yeah, I would be in bed. That's mm-hmm. what I would be doing. Uh, John Lawrence um, is, anyway, you're a distraction. When you're behind the glass wall, I can just cut you out. But now I hear your tapping, I hear your dancing, and your craziness. <laughs> uh, winter weather. There's been a lot of talk about, um, and even really fed- federally. You know, this, this weather this year has affected, the cold weather has affected so much of the country, um, unlike any other year in recent memory. Washington, um, D.C. was shut down because of snow. Multiple at, times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and th- so the question has been, uh, you know, a little lag in the economy. Is this being caused? Is it possible for it to be caused by the bad weather? And uh, John Lawrence is a native central New Yorker. He is the senior director of solution management and marketing for NCR. That used to be National Cash Register, right? Yep. Uh, John on the line now. John, where are you from in central New York? Uh, good morning, Bill. Good morning. Uh, actually, I grew up in the, the southern tier at Binghamton area. I uh, went to school in Ithaca and spent a uh, fair amount of time up in the, the Syracuse area. Still have friends actually in Utica. So you uh, you you know the uh, you know the area. I mean, this oh, yeah. for us we're used to it. Um, I do recall a few years ago when 
we had a big Valentine's Day storm. And the weather uh, just, it, it was nice right up until Valentine's Day. Not much winter. And then it was just terrible weather every day. It snowed every day for like 30 days. Blowing and drifting snow. It was awful. And a lot of businesses closed. It cost people here a lot of money, even in an area that's used to it. So is there anything to to be said for this uh, this this weather affecting the, the nation's economy? Uh, Bill, it's, it's, uh, it's a real issue. Um, we did a, a study uh, not long ago that looked at consumer uh, behavior and, and uh, really the impact of the weather. And uh, what we found is almost half uh, of the people surveyed said that they had to cancel or, or reschedule uh, you know, their plans based mm. on the weather. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, we, we work uh, a lot uh, with, uh, with restaurants as well as financial industries and retail. But you know, in, in hospitality and that, in that restaurant space, uh, it, it's probably the biggest uh, area that's been hit by this yeah. consumer issue. Yeah, because it's just so much easier to say. Uh, I mean, it, it is even difficult on a, when it's really bad to get a pizza delivered um, because you, you're going to be late getting to uh, get into your house. It makes it so much, okay, it's tomato soup and toasted cheese sandwiches tonight, right? Uh, so that, that's right. That's right. It was yeah, Another uh, aspect of this, this uh, study that was interesting is that along those lines, uh, there, there was a, about 60% or so that actually felt bad about calling for uh, delivery uh, mm, during the bad weather. That's interesting. Uh, right. Because you got to, right, because you're in that uh, situation where, boy, you, you, you almost feel guilty, uh, right? I know that's that right. when it's really cold and you drive up to a gas station that pumps for you, I always feel guilty doing that. Um, and I find that you want to maybe maybe tip when you get somebody to do when the weather's really really bad now if it affects us which i tr- truly believe it does imagine what it does for these areas that aren't used to uh, aren't used to this weather oh that's right uh, you know, i'm uh, i'm based here in in uh, atlanta georgia and we experienced that uh, firsthand this year uh, on two different occasions uh, just a small amount of snow uh, really caused uh, a lot of trouble and, and had a direct impact on businesses of all kinds. Now, I'll tell you, uh, here uh, you know, Tug Hill area in the north country, they've been hit with a lot more snow than we have. I think our snowfall totals are actually down, but it's just been miserably cold, really a, a cold winter. And now here we are with four degrees above zero on March 17th. And, you know, who's seeing that now, I, I think, are the contractors, the people that do yard work, the people that yeah. build decks. All of those spring projects, people aren't ready to go. The phones aren't ringing right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's exactly right. Uh, sort of this, this delay in, in kind of all, all sectors uh, of, of the economy, really. And uh, I, I think a lot of businesses, restaurants included, are, are looking at this and saying, you know, what can we do? Yeah. Right. What, what, what's a the weather's been, been a huge impact, and I think the reality is um, the, the weather didn't cause, you know, the, the tough business in, in sort of one storm. It's been a series of, of issues over the long term, and I, I think there's opportunities for restaurants to maybe look at promotions, for example, um, you know, as, as a way to kind of lure people back in and then uh, and, and see if, if maybe they can leverage uh, a great experience in a restaurant yep. to uh, to you know, have share that on social media. Just try to build this thing, this business back over time. Yeah, because you know that the the thing is that uh, while a home improvement company may be able to retain it, uh, it just gets delayed, right? Because you have that money set aside, you know that you've committed to, to that budget. But where restaurants and uh, events and entertainment, those people are never getting that money back. Well, that's right. I mean, you you think you know, particularly in the area where you all are, maybe there's a a birthday or special occasion, you know, Delmonico's yeah. or Chesterfields or something, and uh, and having that those plans change, it's, it's not necessarily something you'll immediately kind of go back right. and, and, and replace. Yeah. Uh, so you got to find opportunities to to address that. What's your uh, website, John? Uh, www.ncr.com. Pretty easy. Uh, thanks for coming on. Let's hope the the weather turns. We could all use it. All right. All right. Hey, great talking with you, Bill. Thanks. Uh, John Lawrence, uh, NCR. Take a break. Uh, back here after the news, top of the hour and WIBX. WIBX and WIBX950.com.